Hey, this is Adam from Edge. I'm back in Rom's office. How are you doing, Rom? Good, Adam. Good. Good to see you again. Thanks. So last time we were here, you told us all about activation and kind of where we've come from and, and what was happening there in Vista. Today, I want to ask you about Windows 7. Sure. I want to find out what the story is. Um, bottom line it for me, I guess. What's different? What's changed for activation in, in Windows 7? Yeah, we, we, we have quite a lot of changes in Windows 7 relating to activation. Uh, the changes are, if I were to summarize them, it can be summarized into three categories. The user experience, how the IT pro deals with activation in an enterprise environment, mm -hmm. and what kind of reporting and what kind of a management tools we provide for the users. We made a lot of small changes that relate to the customer pain points that we have seen in the marketplace. All right, so you just mentioned a few different things there, user experience, deployment. Give me a little bit more detail on that. What's different about the user experience? Yeah, so let's take specifically the user experience. Okay. So the activation, as you know, is all about communicating to users whether they have a genuine product or not. Right. And we want to make sure that that messaging is something that is palatable to our users. More specifically, we want any error messages to be super clear so that the IT pro has a clear understanding of what the root cause of the issue is okay. and being able to address that issue in a more effective manner. We don't want any of the errors to be like you know, spinning off and leading into a customer call to the IT pro center or even to Microsoft. So we have made the dialog boxes more clear in terms of messaging as well as we looked at the root cause of the mess errors and address some of those issues as well. For instance, KMS key, how the product keys are used for activation. We provide what is called KMS keys, as you know, mm -hmm. as a default key for any volume licensing customers. Right. People simply use the product key in every installation of their systems, right. which is not required. You just need to put them in only your KMS host machines. So what we did is that we made sure that we provide guidance during the installation process itself as an inbox experience. So when somebody uses the key type of KMS, it asks them and it tells them that you're trying to use a KMS key. Is that really what you want to do? So that way those kind of error messages can be minimized in the environment. Okay, so it's much more clear now when we're setting up, when we're deploying exactly what's, what's happening with our activation process. That's correct. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit more about the, um, the, the activation key process. As you said, the idea was with, with a KMS key that you just use it one time, right, on a host machine. And that is correct. My KMS server is supposed to hand out the licenses. So what happens if people use it more than one time, if people treat it as a regular product key and just keep trying to use it on all their machines? common scenario in Windows Vista. We have seen many customers use their KMS key as if it's a regular product key on more than one machine. Mm -hmm. And that does produce an activation error when you start using it on more than six machines. Okay. In the case of Mac, Mac key, if somebody were to use the Mac key, we have also done some backend changes in order to make that activation experience seamless so that the enterprise customers don't have to keep worried about like, you know, how many activations limit they have on their key. So the, the process is fully transparent and activated for them. Okay, great. Um, tell me how this is different than Vista. Uh, you know, from a Vista standpoint, uh, the difference is that if customers have spent the energy understanding this activation, how activation works, there is literally no difference at all. The activation technologies, namely KMS, which is a customer hosted environment, and Mac, which is for activating with Microsoft mm -hmm. using volume activation management tool, the same process exists for Windows 7 as well. So the changes have been mostly at a platform level. So what the IT Pro deals with in terms of a KMS and WAMP, they are the same tool set, same process, everything same, remains the same. So that investment is protected between Vista and Windows 7. Cool. So it sounds like if I'm already deploying Vista, if I've already got KMS set up, none of those processes are going to change with Windows 7. I can leverage that existing investment. That is correct, Adam. So let me go into the detail of what are the platform level changes that I was talking about. Okay. Um, for instance, KMS. As I mentioned previously, KMS is meant for providing activation in a customer environment. Previously, we used to distinguish between virtual systems versus physical systems. You have to have, in order for KMS activation to work, 25 physical machines within your environment. With Windows 7, it doesn't have to be physical systems. We do include virtual systems as well as part of this change. While this is a platform change, we do see that it's helping enterprise customers significantly because 
with our ability to activate virtual machines, the customer simply can like you now virtualize their entire stack if they want to. Or if they want to have a developmental environment where they want to use KMS for app testing or any other purposes, KMS becomes a very viable solution. They don't have to depend on external communications with Microsoft. I know previously we supported KMS running on Server 2003. Is that still the case going forward? Yes. So Adam, uh, as you mentioned, is like you know, a lot of our customers use KMS on a Windows Server 2003 platform. Mm -hmm. Today, that KMS infrastructure support both systems running Windows Vista and Windows Server 2008. Okay. At the time of Windows 7 RTM, we will provide an update for Windows Server 2003 as well. Once people update that service, that KMS will be able to support not only systems running Windows 7 client, but also systems running Windows Vista, Windows Server 2008, as well as Windows Server 2008 R2. All pro products can be activated successfully using KMS that is running on Windows Server 2003. Okay, that's true. All right. If I want to find out more information, around where do we go? It's the same place, uh, technet.com slash volume activation. It is part of IT Pro Springboard Initiative, so you can access it through Springboard or through Volume Activation Technet Center. All right. This is good info. Thanks for your time. Thanks. See you next time.